Hey everyone, Graham from Loudwire here, and today, joining me, CM Punk and Travis Stevens, the new movie, Girl on the Third Floor, comes out October 25th in select theaters and video on demand, right in time for Halloween. I've seen it. Very, very good job, both of you, and thank you for being here. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Absolutely, anytime. Uh, so, I want to talk about some of the main dynamics in the movie. Uh, and how they uh, act so powerfully in the film, and sort of also uh, the history of those dynamics in horror movie history as well. Isolation and claustrophobia in the movie uh, stay with you the entire time. Uh, so what can you guys tell me about capturing those dynamics and kind of making the audience feel uncomfortable at those times? Sounds like a question for the director. It does. When you're actually filming in a place that is haunted, it certainly makes the experience of making the film a lot more realistic. Sure. A lot more fun, for sure. Yeah, a lot more interesting. Did you have any weird experiences in the house during the filming? I don't have any experiences. Other people do. I, I, I always just felt like there was just a presence in the house. And mm -hmm. it varied depending on where you were. Basement, third floor, kitchen, like wherever. Uh, and the only way I can explain it to people is it, it's you, you that that feeling you get when you swear you're not alone, mm -hmm. but you know you're alone. You check every single corner behind the the door, everything, but you're like, it's got that feeling. <laughs> yeah. It's that amplified depending on where you are in the house. Sure. I think we did a really good job of utilizing the house as a character in this film. Yeah. Um, the house had a lot of character. Uh, as far as claustrophobia goes, uh, I, I'll i immediately just say John Carpenter, uh, The Thing. Yes. The way you're, you're isolated on uh, a continent that not a lot of people have even been on, right? Uh, you're isolated from the real world. You're isolated from various other countries that have camps on that continent. Yeah. And then you're isolated within that compound. Everybody has their own room. There's a rec room. There's a you know a mess hall. There's the, and I think they did a really good job of. Like, but it's John Carpenter. He's yeah. He's like a, a beyond a brilliant genius. But that's probably my favorite one. Without beating you over the head, like the movie isn't about claustrophobia, and it doesn't make you think about that. But if you know you're if you're in, if you're smart, you watch that movie and you're just like, ooh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I get it then. Yeah, yeah. I get that same same sort of vibe from, uh, there's a movie called Session Nine that okay. Brad Anderson did, which is set in this uh, defunct, you know, former mental institution. And it mostly mm. takes place in the day and these uh, asbestos crew is in there to clean it up. You got these spaces and it shouldn't be scary, but you just spend the whole time being like, something is gonna come out and like murder somebody at any second. I actually just watched the thing like a couple days ago for like the 10th time and it still just holds up so magnificently. Uh, and also probably the best special effects ever. Like it, no CG can touch that. And I think in this movie, I, I don't think I saw any CG. Is that right? There's one uh, combination practical CG shot. Okay, gotcha. Very, very, yeah, I mean, it, that was the approach because you, and we've talked about it a lot, but when you're making it, if everybody in the space can look at the actual thing and be like, this looks silly, or if it works, everybody gasps at the same time, yeah. you know, hey, you've gotten something that works. You're not uh, gonna rely on what ifs. We've all famously seen those uh, behind the scenes shots of Phantom Menace where everybody's like yeah. acting in front of a green screen. And it's just like, how silly does that look? And as an actor, that's gotta be hard to do, you know? Yeah. Everybody trying to pretend there's, you know, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man's here, you know? <laughs> right. you know? Everybody's gonna be, have like a different line of sight and every reaction is gonna be different. Yeah. If, it, if you can touch it and you can feel it, awesome. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of what things you can touch and feel in this movie, the use of marbles I thought was really great because uh, I love it when a horror movie can take something that's just kind of, kind of childish and it doesn't seem scary and turn it into something that makes you feel creeped out. In this movie, the marbles had actually come from some other writers who had sort of envisioned oh. uh, them in a different way in the script. And it's really effective sort of what 
uh, Phil's character experiences with them. So my job was just sort of to give them a personality and find a way to thread them throughout the movie so that when he's actually assaulted by them, it has some uh, significance. And so there's a lot of stuff that uh, I think on second viewing, like we were always just throwing marbles into scenes, even when they didn't belong there and just resting them on counters and stuff. So a lot of Easter yeah. eggs. Like I felt like if you came in here and like handed me a marble, or something, I would have just thrown it across the room. Just like, just, I just don't want to have anything to do with marbles now. Uh, but like when it comes to like inanimate objects that become creepy in other movies, are there anything that you can think of that stand out? It's just a bigger marble, but the this the spheres in uh, Phantasm, I always thought were, as a kid, I was just like, that's the coolest thing in the world, you yeah. know? And, you know, those always lead to some sort of a grisly, gruesome death. So that was always my favorite. But I, I think when it comes to horror movies, um, every inanimate objects have, like, a strong presence, you know? Like, if you show me an axe, I'm going to be like, Jack oh, Torrance... Yeah. You know, like it. So every movie has this. Uh, you know, obviously Freddy has his glove. Jason has a machete. And we we have marbles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's gonna be a hot Halloween costume for kids across America. Yeah, a, <laughs> Just, a guy with a marble, <laughs> a bag full of marbles. Also, uh, I want to talk about your character because uh, you do a good departure of playing a complete piece of shit, and it's a very convincing role. Uh, even like with a guy like me, who I'm a big fan of yours, you do a good job in making me uh, wish for your demise by the end of it. Uh, so can you tell me how you wanted to uh, portray that character and uh, maybe some other uh, good assholes in the history of cinema? I, I wanted to, to be bigger, honestly, I really did. Like yeah. I, I, I wanted to be more of an asshole. I remember the, the, there's one particular scene where, um, you know, I grab Sarah and I'm telling her, like, get out of my house. And, like, I put her against the wall. I think the first time we shot that, it was, like, way over the top. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I but it, this guy knows what he's doing. You know what yeah. I mean? And we had a conversation before we started shooting about playing it subtle. You know, here I am, mm. a hokey pro wrestler. Like, I, I, I need to play to the cheap seats you know, in the 300 level and stuff like that. And obviously doing a film, you know, the camera's right here. So I needed to tone it down a lot. Uh, but I, yeah, I wanted to be so much. Another, another scene I remember is uh, when I'm jogging and I subtly like check out like a girl who walks by me. Like I did this full pirouette, <laughs> like running backwards, like looking, you know, and then he <laughs> did another take and he's like, maybe not so much, you know? So I, I wanted to be like more of a jerk. I think it obviously it works brilliantly the way it's yeah. shot on film now because it's subtle. Um, and I don't know if I should be uh, flattered or hurt that this character is uh, is such a jag off, you know. I, I, but at the same time, what they needed was somebody who could display all of that, but also still be charismatic mm -hmm. and still be likable in a way. Yeah. You know, because let's face it, Don thinks he's the victim. And that's sort of, I think, happening a lot in our world nowadays where sure. people are charming enough to get away with a lot more than if they were more upfront about their motives. Yeah. And for me, I don't know, like charming assholes. I look at uh, Frank in the Hellraiser movie. Mm -hmm. as oh, being yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, he's he's kind of alluring. Yeah, even really, though he's really up front. The ladies were really into him, even <laughs> yeah. though he was a big piece of shit. Yeah. So I get asked a lot, like, who I drew from. Um, and obviously there's Bruce Campbell comparisons, but I think that's mostly because I'm clean-shaven and I'm covered in junk half the movie. Mm. Uh, for me, the character Don... I looked at, believe it or not, Jack Burton in uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Hmm. Because while maybe not as malicious of a jerk, Jack Burton is, to me, my character in this movie. A complete and utter just f up, but charismatic as hell. If you're friends with him, you kind of don't know why. <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't get anything done, but somehow fails upwards. And yeah, I, yeah. I, I looked at that and I was like, well, that'd be interesting if there was like a, a much darker slant to that and l a lot less lovable. So I, I kind of looked at it like that. Yeah.
I think it also reminded me a little bit of Henry Rollins and He Never Died because you kind of, you, you go into the movie kind of being like, oh, you know, like this dude that I love is in this movie. And by the end of it, you kind of forget that that's the reason that you watched it in the first place. And like, and Henry Rollins can play a great asshole too. I mean, Jack Just, Torrance and The Shining. Uh, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's the big one. You gotta. I mean, Jason Voorhees is a pretty big asshole, I think. You know, <laughs> I'd say misunderstood youth. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. He's like what a log use me. <laughs> Pamela Voorhees then. What there, a, there what a bitch. Guys, yes. Guys, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Appreciate it so much. Girl on the Third Floor, October 25th. Go see it in theaters. Go get it on video on demand. Thank you guys so much. Thank Thanks you for having us. All right.